Welcome back to Glendon's Comic Court, a classic slash non classic. This is episode number 1347 and double shot number 1241. I got two Marvel trades. This one is pretty much a complete collection of this creator's run of this book. And I initially thought the guy only did just one story arc and then he left. That's what I initially thought for several years. And I realized, though, no, he did a lot more issues than freaking five. This is Spider Man. By Todd McFarlane. Yes, I have mistakenly believed for a long time that McFarlane only did just the opening story arc of the series and he left to go to Image. Not knowing the fact he did nine more, he did basically ten more issues. He did basically issues six and fourteen and sixteen. Now, yes, Todd McFarlane does write and draw this whole series. Now, it seems as though after the opening story arc, the series became sort of a team up series in a way. Because the I've already discussed the Torment story arc, so the air story arcs there in here are basically all Baltimore. Just coming to nine. Nine is a standalone issue. Actually, nine is not standalone. It's basically all standalone. It's all mostly put all Baltimore partners. First, of course, is Torment. I've already discussed it before. Next one is Mask. It's a two-parter that has. Has appearance by the Hobgoblin. Yes, the Hobgoblin, which at the time was Jason McIndale. And Spider-Man teams up with, of all people, Dan Ketch to stop Hobgoblin, his master demonic plan. Yes, it probably did some stuff with Inferno. The fact he was partially turned a demon. Yeah. Now, you're probably thinking, the Dan Ketch Ghostwriter, why would he team with the Ghostwriter for? Well, here is kind of the thing. I think the reason why we're happy here is... And also at the start of the X-Men series. He actually, I think in the second story arc, uh, right after the opening story arc wrapped up for for X-Men Volume 3 after the Mutant Genesis issues, which was the first seven issues, though Clay only wrote the first three with Jim Lee writing the rest. They had pretty much Dan Cash appear in this book too. My guess is to help basically boost his credibility as basically a character of all the comic universe. And he just they just team up to stop Hobgoblin. That simple just of it. It's a great two-parter. I hate the McFarlane for doing that. Next was a five hour of perceptions. We have Spider-Man team with Wolverine. Though at the start of the storyline, he's wearing his ugly 80s costume. Then we switch over to the Jim Lee costume, which I like that one better. Now, these three, these three part of the team take on the Wendigo, who is a character from the X-Men comics. And this is basically kind of a murder mystery. And Peter Parker is maybe a bit arrogant here that he finds information. He doesn't feel detail the source. But when they do reveal the information, they reveal that apparently it was this cop apparently committed these murders, not the Wendigo per se. But he's like, wait, why? What about him attacking the police officers? The police officers fired first, not the other way around. They lied. Yeah, it's kind of a, a it's kind of an interesting fire partner for this particular run. And also, here's something interesting though. I think it was issue six. I think it was. Look at this one. Uh, three to this were. They had the Spider-Man logo backwards. That's not the only time that happened. Well, basically with this shoe, I think it's like six, I think it is. Let's see. It was the... No, it wasn't this one first. I think it may have been with the first issue with... Uh, there was one of these covers that pretty much reused the same cover as the first issue. Mm -hmm. I think so. And to know that characters in the storyline, they have appeared on the cover in the second part of the storyline. Did it with also with, with Mask as well when they had Dan Ketch on the cover? Which, not a bad idea to do. Let's see if I can find it here. Because there's actually one issue in here where the first, it would actually, it's a clear homage to the first issue's cover. But they pretty much just reuse the cover. <coughs> Maybe this issue 13. Here it is. 13, right here. Yeah, for issue 13, they were used the same exact cover. The only change they made is the costume. Yeah. Now, pretty much Torment is the first five issues in this, not only for this trade, but also for the series. Mask is issue 6 and 7. Perceptions is issues 9 through 12. Subsidy, which is actually issue 13. 
We're on position 14. It's basically a two-parter where it's a very strange two-parter, per se. Now, this is against their parents by Michael Morbius. This is, I think, a year, pri year or two prior to him getting his own, so his own solo book. The last of 32 issues. Yep. He's just basically Spider-Man doing like the, the sewer level type of thing. Where it's a very low-key two-parter. And this kind of in a way was McFarlane's last official story he did for the book. Before he left, took an issue off. Yeah, issue 15 was part of a story arc where Spider-Man team with, of all people, beasts called it the Mutant Factor. 16 is a crossover with X-Force. Issue 4. Yes, the fourth issue. So for the second time this book's run, basically you have Spider-Man basically cross over the character to promote their title, the brand new spanking new title. Oh yeah, here's the thing about this book. Okay, the main villain of the storyline is a Juggernaut and Black Catholic. Black Catholic. I kind of forgot this two-parter happened, but this is kind of the reason why people don't usually talk about this one. Look at this. Yeah, a two-parter where you're reading it like this the whole time. Not only for this issue, but the following issue. This, this is a two-parter called Sabotage. It's just a cross between these two titles. Yeah, I think in the case of these two titles, uh, well, X-Force had just started, and they probably did as a good marketing employ people to buy the book. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yep. But the thing is, I initially thought, like I said, I think should have for a long time before I just did the five issues, then he left the form image. Not the case per se. He did issue 14, skipped 15, but he came back for 16. Just was one part of the story. Now, he didn't do the X-Force issue. That's not my life of the season. He may have started this two-parter, but he didn't finish it. Basically, I think he just left it up to the creators of X-Force for that. Which, at the time, X-Force, the... The 90s lineup was consisted of these following people. If I can find the... Let's see. Well, Cable was one of them, along with Domino. And this was actually like just a like couple issues just after Deadpool's second ever appearance. Yeah, the lineup was comprised of Cable, Shatterstar, Warpath, Boom Boom, and Cannonball. That you can clearly see in the cover. Cable's not there, but he is part of this lineup. Yep. We also have Gideon and Sunspot. Yep. Yeah, there is two part or two. Yeah, Gideon himself had was just recently featured in a story arc in their end process brief run he did for cable like about three years ago. Actually it was four years ago he did the story. Yeah, just four years ago he was recently featured. Which is quite cool. Now reading this, this is just pure fun. Love this stuff. Yes, it's early 1990s, but Tom McFarlane is, is is basically famous for being a very good artist. I mean, his work basically is really good, but the guy himself is not a very nice person from what I've heard. Yes. I'm going to give this book roughly a I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. It's actually really damn good. Yeah. Though, why can you tell some, like, why is Wolverine like hanging out in the jungle? ish. It's probably something that takes place after the Wolverine Jungle Avenger. I think either storyline came up before or after that one came out. But when I think of Wolverine in the jungle, I think of that particular one shot. Alright, let's talk about two recent characters. We have Aro and Swordmaster, Origins and Odysseys. This particular trade collects the backup stories. Yes, the backup stories. Yes, these two titles have backup stories. From the first six issues of Aro and Swordmaster. The one from Aro is simply put her and sword her and Wave teaming up will also see Wave have been killed off the Triumph Division. You're probably thinking, who the heck is the Triumph Division? Well, they are simply put the, the premier superior team for the Philippines. Yeah. That's not a joke. That seriously is true. They're kinda of like how for Russia it's a winter guard. For the UK it's sort of like Excalibur or MI-13, but for the Philippines, yes, the Philippines have got their own superhero team, which is simply the Trans Division. For Japan, it's Big Hero 6. But you probably think, okay, 
Canada's got Alpha Flight, though this is no longer somewhat of a space program. It, it's been confusing. For the U.S., it's the Avengers, the X-Men, Fantastic Four. It's basically any big superhero team that basically comes from Marvel Comics. It's a lot of them set in the U.S. The Trident Division is a Philippine-based team. And these two are Asian superheroes. And Greg Pak is basically partially responsible for creating these characters and bringing these characters from overseas. Now, the the Aro story, that's done by Greg Pak and Alyssa Wong. Who comes over to issue number six, number two. You have Papa Man in the artwork of these issues. The Sword Master Shang T Masterclass, that's a two part with these two, team up to take uh well, first take on Ares to free his son from these with Atlanta stuff. Excuse me, yes. And it's just a great two part. It's a great six part storyline. And I like the fact how this sets up in here. We you, you get good flow, no interruptions, great six parter. The R.O. and Wave storyline, that one's quite interesting. Is it a backstory? No. Now, the thing is, basically, now, Wave was kicked out the Trend Division for uh, for desertion. Yes. Now, basically, R.O. explained to her, you left because you wanted to help the Age, the age of Atlas. You, 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 you answered the call. And... They're really like, no, it's not necessarily. And then Red Feather shows up to take back the sword because apparently the pri property of the Trans Division? Since when? They fight, he, he takes back the swords, and then the whole storyline is simply them trying to regain the trust of the Trans Division, which is, which is actually really good. And it's just a great six-parter. At the end, basically, Wave is restored to position at Trans Division. She gets the swords back, but she's like, this is good, but I need to, you need to regain my trust first. Then I'll take the source back. He's like, fair enough. And basically, both this first story arc in here, first story here, and the other one leads into a mini series that just actually concluded three months ago. Yes, it was a three issue mini series that basically was on hiatus for six months because of the pandemic last year. Yep, but these issues here are really good. I give these books roughly a I give this book roughly a nine point five out of ten. It's really good. Surprisingly, aside from Shang Chi and Ares, the first story just basically features a lot of original characters. For this one, not nothing familiar. But in the case second one, Shang Chi and Ares, people know who these two are because Shang Chi has been around since the seventies. Ares has been around since the nineteen sixties. This version of Ares, this is the comic version of Ares. He's a creation of Jack the King Kirby and Stan Lee. But what about, let's say, Shang-Chi? He's a creation of Doug Mowok and... I think we'll, oh, yeah. Jim Starlet. Yeah, these two guys created this character back in the 70s. Yep. But it's interesting. No, in Swordmaster, they explain kind of... I think this may tie into what was the main story. Where Sword basically used the sword to help best thing happen with Missing Father. Which, that's an interesting story. And Ares agrees to work with him in exchange for freeing his son. Which they agree... Which he basically agrees with. And they go and free his son. And then it's definitely leads to stop with, with Atlantis. Yep. But that much I'll say with these two trades. Both really good. And do recommend them. Yes. Now am I going to pick up the me main Aro and Star Master series? I probably will per se. But this is mostly just a backup stories. But I kind of. I really, what I really want to do for Age of Atlas. Is because I, I want to review more Age of Atlas stuff. Because I think they're a great concept. This is simply the new generation of Age of Atlas. Because the original version made debut back in 2006. This group only made a debut just a few years ago. Which actually first showed up in the pages of War of the Realms. Yeah, roughly a couple of years ago. This I think it's a follow up to the group called The Protectors. For the pages of it. From. from uh. I'm trying to think, what was the name? Of it? it was the totally awesome Hulk series. Yep. But yeah, that's it for this particular review. Stay tuned for my other reviews. Next will be Barto, then Black Butler, then One Piece. Okay, then One Piece. Uh, One Punch Man. Okay, just like this video. Bye.